a Tamari Award fan though. Um, excuse the face. We've we travelled down to Hamilton, got here about half past two this morning, so yeah. But um just wanted to toe talk all what our bishop has said and um the testimony that he's borne. Um, I too have been kind of feeling like I need to do a, just a, a live video, especially for our sisters, um, in regards to our ward welfare. Um, you know, it's really hard, especially in this um, day and age, uh, for our sisters, and especially for our youth, um, with all that they're put put in the media expectations, the uh, marketing expectations all show that women are supposed to be these perfect individuals, supposed to have the perfect family and be able to cook dinner and go to work and have this immaculate house and our children aren't supposed to cry and stay up and we must be doing something wrong if we we can't do all of these things. Um, but let me tell you that they're either high or um, they have a lot of support. And I'm sorry if I offend people, but <laughs> I can't do it. And I know um, so many people out there can't do it either. So I've got a little sister. She's um, 21. She's got twins. Um, they're four years old. And I spent two days with her. And by the end of two days, I was like, oh my goodness. Her house is immaculate. She's up on the go from half past six to half past eleven at night sometimes and she's just, she's studying psychology. She's my dad's PA. She um, looks after her two babies and cooks tea, gets my son's and her partner's Kai, alcohol, whatever, after work that they need. And then goes to the gym. And I looked at her and I said, Ash, your skin's terrible. You've got ulcers in your mouth. You've got cold sores. And you look shattered. And she said, M um, Sissy, I, I can't handle it. I can't handle what I'm going through. It's too much. I said to her, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Just, who cares? If it's not going to get done, what's going to happen? And I can remember somebody telling me the same thing when my kids were that age and thinking, are you listening to yourself? That is like totally crazy. But at the end of the day, it doesn't need to get done. Um... And I've only just learnt that because I had to have the perfect lawns, the perfect house. My kids had to be the perfect children sitting along the row at church and, you know, giving them the eyes and you better mm, stay there or you're going to get it when we get into the car. And it doesn't help. It really doesn't help. Um, you end up breaking down and being a mess. Um, so... What my counsellor has told me is to cocoon. And um, cocooning means staying in your jammies all day. It means turning on the Netflix. It means doing whatever you want for the day just for you. It means staying in bed. It means resting. Um, our society today may, has told us we need to be busy. It is so cool to be busy. Look at my, look at my, look at my, look at what I'm doing. You don't have to. You really don't have to. I so would never, ever, ever, ever do a, a video like this if I hadn't 
got the like my hair done, my makeup on. I'm like, who cares? What genuinely matters is you. And what genuinely matters is your family, your loved ones, and what God thinks of you, and what Heavenly Father thinks of you. And um, I urge you, sisters especially, to go in, go just find a quiet moment after you've had your cocooning session, get the chocolate out, get the ice cream out. Get whatever you want out of your cupboards. Go spend a little bit of money um, to look after you. And then sit back and look. And then ask Heavenly Father what he sees. Because it doesn't matter what anyone else sees. And when you've asked Heavenly Father what he sees, you'll be amazed. Because it is definitely not what you see. And I know because um, I've had to do that. And if you have a look around the world today, everything is stopping. Um, Auckland's always stopping. We've had tsunamis coming where we've had to stop. And that's what I think the Lord is telling us to do. Stop the craziness. Stop everything. We're being distracted. We need to just stop. We need to look at ourselves. And then once we've looked at ourselves, we need to look at our families. We need to look at our relationship with Heavenly Father. And that's the first thing that I think that we need to do is look at our relationship with Heavenly Father first. And then everything falls into place. Um, you know... Uh, for me personally, I'm like, oh, my kids are at the gate. Husband, oh my gosh. Um, me. And I've looked at it and I'm like, well, all that matters is my relationship to God. And if I just trust in him and let God prevail, then everything will work out. And I finally let go. And um, if you have a look at our prophet's counsel to us um, he said to let God prevail and to look at the ways in the scriptures that God has prevailed in our lives and to write it down and to notice the blessings also that happen as we let God prevail I want to share a personal experience with you I've thought that if I do this and if I do that and if I do this in my marriage, then everything's going to be perfect and I can either move on one way or move on one way and it's either going to be absolutely perfect or I've given up and I, I just don't care anymore. Um, it hasn't worked. So I've just gotten up every day and I've said to Heavenly Father, okay, Heavenly Father, these were my plans, but today it's not going to happen. This is what I feel like I need to happen. Um, and I've got all of these goals. I've got to get this done, and I've got to get this done, and I've got to get this done. But in the morning when I've woken up and I've said my prayers, my goals have changed and my plans have changed. And I've just gone to Heavenly Father and I've said, this is what I feel is important today, Heavenly Father. Um, please help me, please help me to do this, and I'm just going to do it, and please bless me. Sisters, we already know what we need to do, we've just got to do it. We've just got to do it because Heavenly Father trusts us, and Heavenly Father knows that we have the capability to do so. So I was in Bishop's office yesterday and he shared with me the experience of um, the brother of Jared and how the Lord asked him, well, what do you want me to do? And so he was like, okay, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to plan, I'm going to think about it. And then I have enough faith for um, you, Heavenly Father, to touch these stones and they're going to light up. And 
he had the faith to know that. And um, he's, he's given us the ability to be able to um, work things out for ourselves. He has faith in us. He saved us for these last days. And he knows that we can do the work that we can do. Who knows that we can do that as well? Satan. So he'll distract us. He'll make us think we're useless. He'll make us think that we're the worst possible people that we can think of. He'll make us think that church sucks. That it's the worst place to be. Why would I want to go there? Why would I want to go around people that judge us? Why would I want to go around people that have no idea what's going on in their lives? Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just keep coming. I've had so many people judge me, um, tell me I'm crazy, come into my house, threaten to throw me out. Don't care because... Um, I know Heavenly Father loves me. I've been homeless. Uh, lived in poverty my whole life. Doesn't matter. Because I have the faith that the Lord will provide. And he has. Just like that, um, that oil and that meal that never runs out. I can remember um, having no food in the house and having bread and leaving empty boxes in my cupboards because I didn't want to see how empty our cupboards were. And then praying to Heavenly Father one day and saying, Heavenly Father, we've had bread for four days. And I know, I know, we just need meat and milk. I've got no milk to last. And Heavenly Father said, get up off your knees and go and check the fridge. I said, there's nothing in the freezer. And he said, go up, get up off your knees now and go and check. And I checked and I knew it was empty. I so there was only ice in my fridge. And I checked the freezer and there was a one kilo frozen mince and a frozen milk. And I burst into tears as a single mummy because I knew I had to go to tech the next day. I knew I had to, you know, all of these other responsibilities. And he knew, he knew that that's exactly what I needed. And, um, you know, miracles come to pass, brothers and sisters. He loves us. Have that faith. Leave everything in his hands and he will take care of everything. Love him. Serve him. Love your families. Serve your families. Do the right thing. And if you don't do the right thing, repent. Say sorry, Heavenly Father. I'm not perfect. Help me to be better. And um, leave it with him. I love you. This is the Saviour's Church. Keep going. Read your scriptures. Say your prayers. If it all seems too much, everything else is too much. Stop everything else. Read your scriptures and say your prayers. And I promise you, in the name of our Saviour, you'll be able to accomplish everything else. And if you don't, it doesn't need to be done. Um, that's about all. I'm not perfect. My life isn't perfect. Bishop's not perfect. None of our leaders' lives are perfect, but we're trying. Um, we're just trying. I go on my crazy waves and I'm like, yes, let's do this and let's do that. And in the end, I'm the one that gets hurt. And I'm the one that gets tired. And I'm the one that needs the support. And who's there? The priesthood, bishop, brother Davis and my husband so love your priesthood holders they can see their weaknesses they really don't need to be told it um, 
I've found that as I love my husband and don't tell him his weaknesses, um, things go a lot better. And I get what I want. Um, because they love us. They love us. They already know what they're doing wrong. Um, just support them. Support them in everything that they're doing. And they will love you and your children and the house will be happier. Um, and that's my thing. Just love. Just love. Don't judge. Just love. And as you love, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Um, if people have got issues, that's their issues. It's between them and the Lord. It's not between you and them. It's between them and the Lord. Um, if you don't want, like the way that a person is doing something, they're doing the best that they can. Just love them. And they'll learn. They'll learn to do it differently. And, yeah, I just want to tell you, Jesus lives... Satan is also real. He will stop you from doing whatever you need to accomplish. But you can accomplish it anyway. And I testify of that. Um, keep going. Keep loving. Support our bishop. Support our leaders. If they ask you to do something, do it. Thank you so much to everyone that does it for me. If I ask for something... Straight away it's done. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I love it. And I say these things humbly in Jesus Christ. Amen.